Welcome to the Boneyard with Steve Robertson. As always, I am your good friend and host, Steve Robertson, here on the birthday edition of The Yard. It's true, I work on my birthday. I work every day, but I'm working on my birthday, too. I do think we're going to go to the movies tonight. I do think we're going to do that. We went to dinner last night. Wife's kind of making a bigger deal about my birthday this year. Maybe it's because I'm the only one here. You know, we're empty nesters, and I guess she feels like, you know what, I don't, I don't have anybody to hang with, you know, so... So here we are. Yeah, we had a great dinner last night. Came home, watched a little, uh, watched, I guess we watched the, uh, another episode of Your Honor. Are you guys familiar with this on Netflix? You should be. Uh, Brian Cranston, of course, uh, main character. It's great. The first season was fabulous. I'm about halfway through the second season. And uh, having a good time with it. I think you will too. And then we watched uh, some of The Office. You know, we, we watched Big Bang Theory all the time and then we decided to change it up because i like to go to bed with something a little bit light right i mean i'm not going to watch uh you know, I don't know i'm not going to watch uh you know jfk or anything before i go to bed you know I like to have something light to go to bed too it's true you know turn that extra fan on kind of get that white noise going sometimes put a meditation on sleeping good here as of late hope you guys are as well but um but yeah, thanks so much for everybody that has reached out and um, wished birthday greetings. That's the thing about Facebook, right? There's sometimes I think, you know, Facebook's just kind of okay. You know, it's kind of become a corporate thing and all these sponsored posts in my feed and things like that. And, and then your birthday rolls around and you have people that uh, wish you happy birthday that you rarely ever hear from. It's kind of nice. You know, all these people, of course, that, uh, you know, from your past, you know, you got high school you know, classmates and teammates and former Mississippi State coaches and players and many of you, Boneyard listeners and readers. And, you know, it's always so interesting. It's always interesting. And uh, I appreciate it. I try to like all of those posts. I think it's the least that we can do when somebody takes time out of their day uh, to wish us a celebratory greeting on the day of our birth. It's true. So thank you for that, and um, I don't really need anything. I, I do not want what I have not got, right? That's kind of how I feel about life. I don't know how you feel. There's some things I'm working towards, but uh, I don't know. The bride says she's got a couple things on the way, but unfortunately, they're not going to make it in time for my birthday, which tells me she didn't think about it until probably yesterday or the day before. But uh, nevertheless, I'm not a little kid. I don't mind waiting a couple days. I told you guys, you know, middle-aged and married, you know, you start thinking about needful things. She asked me the other day, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want, I want a new wireless mouse. That's what I want. After working through the research for the dude, I've kind of worn this one out. i got to retire it. It's true. I mean, maybe some new flip-flops. I don't know. Motley Crue shirt. Something like that. I don't need to be made to feel special. I don't. Now, I make a big deal about her birthday. I'm not going to lie about it. And, and to young men and to young women, whatever, whatever your um, situation may be, when you have a female in your life that is your significant other, let me give you a little tip here. And I don't care what any of them say, because when it comes to this, they're all liars. It's true. I'm just going to call you out, ladies. It's true. There are a few things you got to do when you're a husband or a significant other, or again, you know, whatever your situation is. I don't want to assume anything. But I know this, if you love a woman, there are a few things that you have to do. And you should want to do. It's not a sense of obligation, it's a sense of honor, right? When somebody is willing to share their life with you in a full-time or a part-time capacity, because you know, maybe, maybe you, you know, have your own homes, I don't, I don't know. You have to tell her every day that she's beautiful. Every day, every day, and I do. And you have to tell them that you love them. And not just in a text. I mean, we do that too. But every time we hang up the phone, I tell her I love her. Every time she leaves the house, I tell her I love her. You know, I, I do. And, um, and I mean it. And we've been together over 30 years, you know. And uh, very blessed in that respect. It's true. I understand. We are kind of the exception rather than a rule. Not that it's always been a bed of roses. It hadn't been. But you also have to make a big deal about her birthday. Even when she tells you not to, do it anyway. And not just to play gotcha, right? Even though I love the big surprise, I've thrown three surprise birthday parties for her in our time together. She hadn't thrown one for me, not that I'm bitter or anything. 
But I guess today's still young. But uh, all that I understood, you have to make a big deal about a birthday. And you don't always have to go spend a bunch of money, right? That's that's kind of the thing that I think a lot of people just kind of throw money at something. And they think that kind of says, oh, look how thoughtful. That's easy to do, right? It's easy to do that. It's easier than ever to spend money these days. You can get on Amazon, order something that's here the next day. You know, pretty soon it'll be here the same day. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of little things you can do. You know, you clean up. You know, you, do, you take on some responsibilities maybe you don't ordinarily do. You do something special for them. You know, it's true. You do some things like that. I mean, that's, you got to do things to show people that you care. It's not just words. And, and my wife is really an acts of service kind of person, right? I, I'm a little different, right? I'm, I'm, as, as I learned at marriage boot camp years ago, we went as a 25-year anniversary gift to each other. Not that we had any problems, but we just said, let's go clean out the closet, you know, so we don't have problems. You know, that's one of the things that I've learned in life. There are a lot of people that once they become empty nesters and they have to focus on each other, you find out that the marriage is broken, you know, and so... I never felt that way, but I didn't want to get into that, that position. So we went, found out that I am a words of affirmation person. And maybe that is something that, uh, you know, stems from growing up poor and broke and, you know, uh, you know from broken homes. Maybe, maybe I need that affirmation, you know. And I do, especially from her. You know, it's like when she tells me that she's proud of me about something, it means more than a thousand of you. No offense, but it's true. You know, the person that you make your emotional investment is. When you know that that person is proud of you and the things you've accomplished in life and the way you carry yourself, it's very, very special. But um, she's not so much the, uh, you know, the words of affirmation person. You know, she wants me to do something for her. So it's like, you know, I, I do things like go gather up all the trash and, you know, take care of the dogs, do some work around the house. That really gets her excited. It does. You know, like she always says, you know, I, I appreciate when you make my life easier. And in, in these days, with her working so much, uh, it's part of the deal, right? It's a little easier to keep it clean when it's just uh, me and the dogs here. And you, you're hanging out with us too. But uh, I, I just shared that, you know, and again, a lot of people say, well, Steve, you know, are we going to pass around an offering plate? No, we're not. And if we are, we're going to donate all the funds to Bulldog Initiative. But um, there's nothing quite being in love and being recognized. And uh, when you have that special person in your life, you got to make a big deal about their birthday. You just do. You have to make a big deal about it. And I don't need somebody to make a big deal about my, my birthday. I'm just happy to, you know, be able to spend some time. I don't require a whole lot. And not that neither does she. She's not high maintenance by any stretch. But uh, I've kind of spoiled her on her birthdays. It's true. And the thing that I've learned about that is like, hey, we're going to take a, take a birthday trip. You know, and I'll even order some clothes. And uh, she is okay with me ordering her clothes because I have good style. And she wears them. And I buy her a lot of things that perhaps she wouldn't buy herself. But uh, I encourage you to do that. And uh, ladies, I'll tell you this too. Don't, 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 just be, uh, don't just be takers. Be givers too. You know, dad deserves a little uh, special time too. And again, I think I speak for most men. And I hate to generalize in that term, but uh, I think I speak for most of us. We don't really need a lot. We really don't. We, I mean, you buy us a gift, you know, buy us something that we need to make our life a little bit easier. You know, whether it's a new coffee cup or, you know, something like that. You don't have to go spend a ton of money. But the main thing that we want is just to be respected. Be respected and appreciated. Above all things. And a lot of people say that, and they really require a lot more. And they think, well, you know, respect and appreciation should be level one loving, and it should be. But there's so much of us, and I, I'm not not playing a victim here, but there's so much of us on the dad side of things that we never really talk about, right? Because we take the hit for everybody emotionally. And that's not saying we don't have some amazing moms out there. We do. But sometimes when it's time to, you know, when you you got a dog die, you know, and you got to go dig the hole and bury a dog, you got to tell the kids their pet got ran over or something like that. That's, that's a part of the daddy job description nobody ever tells you about. You know, when, you, when, when somebody mistreats your child at school, you know, you got to go up there and have this um, bridled aggression, right? You got to go up there and you got to show your teeth a little bit, but you, know, you don't go up there and tear the school apart, right? But you've got to let your kid know you got their back. And some folks don't understand how difficult that is for some of us, right? It's true.
But nevertheless, again, thank you guys for uh, the birthday wishes and greetings and uh, the, just a little, my little anecdotes there. Kind of help you make you and the person you love's life a little bit better. It's true. And, and give without expecting reciprocation too, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't go make a big deal out of their birthday. And then when your birthday comes along and it's just dinner and a movie, you know, maybe you don't go get the Airbnb and go spend the weekend in the mountains or something. When that doesn't happen for you, don't get passive aggressive and say, well, when my your birthday, I did this. No, no, no. That's not what we do it. We're not doing it to lay the groundwork to come back later and be a victim, right? You do it because you love them and you enjoy spending time with them. And you rejoice in the fact that they were born and part of your life and you are celebrating their existence. That's why you do it. Speaking of celebrating, Bulldog Burger Company, always the best place to go celebrate. Whether it's a graduation, it's a night out with friends, a birthday, an anniversary, whatever, they can accommodate you. They're glad to do so. Uh, Bulldog Burger Company, three great locations to serve you. University Drive in Stark Vegas, Gloucester Street there in Tupelo, Lake Harbor Drive in the Ridge and Flowood area. Uh, go by and check them out. Let them know that you're in town to dine and dine well. Get these spring rolls as your appetizer. Pick out a great burger. And maybe you don't want to eat that heavy, but I'm going to encourage you when you're really feeling like, you know what, I really need to eat. I want to enjoy my meal, but I really need some nourishment. Bulldog Burger Company is going to take care of you with those great big portions. You get so much more than you pay for. And you can't say that about most places. I love Bulldog Burger Company, and I have for a long, long time, long before they were a sponsor of this show, I jumped at the opportunity to partner with them because they said, hey, these guys are winners. I want to be affiliated with them. I think we've won together. You can win with us by dining at Bulldog Burger Company. Get the spring rolls as your appetizer. They'll make you and everybody around you better looking. And maybe consider getting that chocolate shake to go when you leave. And you can ride that ride home with a smile. Bulldog Burger Company, the place where people go to meet, M-E-A-T. Okay, since we have been together, some things that we have been expecting have come to pass. And uh, I've got a lot to say about this. And some of, it, some of you aren't going to like it. And it might hurt your feelings. And uh, that's okay. That is perfectly okay with me. You know, sometimes, you know, I posted this on the message board earlier. There's a lot of people that say, well, they just tell it like it is. Or this guy just tells it like it is. Well, if they only tell you when it's negative, they're not telling you like it is because sometimes things are positive. So don't get bamboozled by a pessimist masquerading as a realist. It's true. Don't do it. And I've never met a pessimist that didn't fashion themselves as a realist. But yet they never had anything positive to say. Right? It's funny how that works. Sometimes telling it like it is is good. Sometimes it's a positive thing. And if you're not getting balance from your favorite realist, they're not a realist. But here we go. So we picked up the uh, commitment of Ace Reese. You are going to absolutely love this young man. Uh, he is a very gregarious, a very intelligent, a very down-to-earth player and person but a guy that's kind of got his goals up around the moon somewhere. I love it. A guy that's got ambition, a guy that believes that he can come to Mississippi State and compete for an NFL championship and get to Omaha. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I, I know you got to have the measurables. You do. you got to be big enough, strong enough, talented enough to play at Mississippi State. But with those givens established, I don't want anybody here to ever put on an M over S cap from the grounds crew to the leadoff hitter to the fans in the stands to the people working security. I don't want anybody anywhere in the world to put on an M over S cap or a t-shirt or a bumper sticker on your Jeep or whatever. If you don't believe that Mississippi State is the greatest and the Mississippi State deserves to be on the national stage each and every year. Now, we haven't been, and it stinks. But to give Jim Moorhead some credit, nobody rises to low expectations. We are a program that has expectations. And when I interview people like Ace Reese, and he is already a guy that, hey, I'm coming to Mississippi State because I want to play at a place where baseball matters, where there is an expectation to win, that fires me up. I don't want anybody here to just be a tourist. Well, I played at Mississippi State. No, 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 no. 
I, I don't want that element in our baseball program. I don't want somebody that's just happy to wear the uniform. Because if you're only happy to wear the uniform, you don't deserve to wear the uniform. This is not like some other places. I want baseball to be feared. I've shared that many times on this show. I want people, when they see us on their schedule, thinking, you know what, let's just go fishing this weekend. I'm not going to go sit there and watch Mississippi State beat us to death. That's the mystique that I want this program to have. We used to have it. Got it back for a little while. Lost it again. Got it back. And so when I start talking to players like Ace Reese, I start thinking, you know what, this kid gets it. He does. Now, a few things that I'll share with you. He uh, is from Canton, Texas. Now, one of the things, that one dispute that Ace and I will have at some point is over this flea market business. And so for those of you in Madison County, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We have the famous flea market in Canton, Mississippi. These Canton, Texas people have one, but we were first. It's true. We were first. It's true. So we're Led Zeppelin, those of us from Canton, Mississippi, and then the folks in Canton, Texas, as good as it is, they're Greta Van Fleet, okay? That's, you know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. You're just trying to be the same thing, trying to replicate that same glory. Now, all that understood, Ace is from Canton, Texas, and it's really all he'd known. And so when he was being recruited, had a chance to go to the University of Houston. It wasn't his only opportunity, but he went down there, and there was a part of him, he's like, you know what, hey, I'm going to get a chance to go live in a major city. There'll be so much to do. You know, I've lived here. It's been kind of limited resource-wise. You know, there's always – you've got entertainment options are somewhat, uh, you know, sparse. But I'm going to go down to Houston. I mean, there's a concert every weekend. There's always something going on. You know, you got this, you got that. And he went down there, and he kind of figured out this really wasn't so much for him, at least not at this point in his life. And so he comes and visits Starkville, Mississippi, the home of the Diamond Dogs, and they're walking around the field. And his dad turns to him, and, and Ace said he was already feeling it, you know. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal for us. We've been to Dirty Noble Field hundreds of times. But every time I walk through those gates, I'm thinking, I'm so glad to be here. You can imagine what it's like for the first time, you know, for somebody that's new. And not just somebody that's witnessing it for the first time, but somebody that's going to play at Dirty Noble Field at some point. And he's walking around, and he's kind of <clears throat> taking it all in, feeling the vibe. And his dad turns to him and says, Ace, this is home. This is home. Get to get in the car to get ready to go home? And mom's like, you know, Ace, a lot of these schools are, are really nice schools, but these people at Mississippi State, they love you. They love you. And Ace is like, well, you know, I owe it to myself to hear everybody else out. And he says, you know, when he went, and everywhere he went, he was comparing it to Mississippi State. He was comparing their coaching staff to ours, comparing their facilities to ours, comparing our campus our incredible stadium, and nobody measured up. And this is a guy that had a ton of options. This is a guy, you know, basically told LSU, hey, guys, I'm going to Mississippi State. And LSU wanted him. And I hear this a lot, right? People are like, well, you know, and there's so many of you guys too. I love you to death, but some of y'all make my head hurt so bad. It's true. And, and a lot of it, too, is because there are people that kind of operate in a position of ignorance, and that's not being disrespectful. There's a lot of people out there don't have access to the information that we do, and then you know, they don't listen to the show or don't subscribe to Gene's page, and then they're in the dark. You know, the most knowledgeable fans in the Mississippi State fan base subscribe to Gene's page, listen to the show. It's true. You say what you want. But Ace is a guy that um, – <clears throat> had offers from much of the SEC. And that's the thing I hear some, so many people are like, you know, well, Steve, we're not, we're not beating this school. You know, we're, we're beating Memphis. And, you know, guys, but we, every commitment that we have, every one, out of the NCAA transfer portal, every single one of them had multiple SEC offers. And the majority of the guys took multiple SEC visits. And listen, there's a respect factor. A lot of these guys don't want to talk about their offers because it's more about where I'm going, right? And there, listen, the whole Ole Miss thing is it's not enough for us to have this kid. Who did we beat to get him? That's not really the case of Mississippi State baseball. Our coaches wanted this young man. He wanted to come here, and several other SEC schools wanted him too, and he chose us over them. But I love the kid. 
You're going to like him too. I wish we had media days. We'd send him. Again, incredible kid. But he hit 278 last year. He had uh, eight doubles, four triples. Man, you like the sound of that, don't you? Seven tanks, 34 ribbies. He was 5-9 and nine in stolen bases. And, and to me, if he's got that kind of speed, that tells me it's a technique issue. We can coach that. He was a Big 12 all-freshman team member and uh, a big left-handed bat, you know, 6'3", 205 pounds. This guy's going to be a double-digit home run guy if he works hard to go along with the rest of the double-digit home run guys we've signed. Uh, I, I like it, and I think you should like it too. And um, you know, earlier in the week, of course, uh, Zach Root picked Arkansas over Mississippi State. It's a disappointing thing. It is. I'm not going to sit here now like we didn't want him. We did. We didn't expect him, but we wanted him. We didn't get him. And some people freaked out. They had a lot to say. And uh, the thing that I'll say about that is this whole thing, it's a long process. I pointed this out on the jeanspage.com message boards earlier. We got Cal Stevens' commitment on July 31st last year. Ends up being a All-American, All-SEC, Friday night guy, probably fixed to be a third-round draft pick. We got him on July 31st. It's July 3rd. So basically four weeks from now, we ended up landing a guy that ultimately became our Friday night starter. And that happened kind of by default because of the fact that, um, you know, Nate Dome got hurt. But Cal Stephen was the guy that many of you, after the LSU game, said, oh, this guy can't compete in the SEC. He can't. Not going to be able to get it done. And he ends up getting the All-American honors from multiple publications. And so – the thing that I say is that, uh, you know, we've got about three spots left, and we're going to talk about that later in the show. But when you've got a chance to get a guy like this, a guy that heard from, I think, all but four schools in the SEC when he went to Portal, and everybody wanted him to come visit, and you get him, you celebrate that. And the very first thing, it's so funny, I posted this commitment story. I'm not going to call the person out. This is a guy that's very celebrated. This is a guy that people around college baseball are like, hey, this is a really big get for Mississippi State. Uh, John, Q Bull, John Q. Bulldog jumps on Facebook and says, we must not have any NIL money or we'd be getting better players. Now, here's the thing that I will share about that. And, uh, again, this is one of those things that may hurt some feelings, and I don't care. If you don't know, don't post. You're making us all look silly, man. You go get a Big 12, all Big 12 freshman a year, a freshman t- team member of the year, a guy as a freshman, that did 278 with seven tanks, and just because he's from Houston, you just automatically assume that he's a bad player? I mean, you're, all you're doing is just advertising your ignorance, man. It's true. He's a good ball player. I know what's going to happen the first time he strikes out. This guy's going to message me and say, see, I told you so. Because we want to be miserable, right? Some people, we love to be miserable. And even in times of prosperity and the good news, we got to find some way to be upset about it. Ace Reese is a dude. And, again, if he stays healthy, that guy's going to be a big part of your lineup. He could be your three-hole hitter. He absolutely could. All right, we've also got another commitment. Today's episode brought to you by Zipix Nicotine Toothpicks. Zipix brings you a totally satisfying, convenient, and great tasting way to curb your nicotine cravings. Now you can get your nicotine fix anytime, anywhere without having to rely on smoking or vaping. How cool is that? Zipix Toothpicks give you an easier, better, and more discreet way to get your fix. They're available in six great long-lasting flavors and have options in both 2 milligram and 3 milligrams of nicotine. Zipix are perfect for flights, sporting events, restaurants, and literally everywhere else that smoking and vaping are banned. They're also one of the most cost-effective nicotine products on the market. Zipix also offers caffeine and B12-infused toothpicks. If you're not a nicotine user or if you're trying to get away from the nicotine habit, wouldn't that be a good thing? Zipix have already helped tens of thousands of customers get their nicotine fix without needing to inhale smoke or vapors. Make your lungs happy and try Zipix nicotine-infused toothpicks. Ditch the cigarettes, ditch the vape, get some nicotine-infused toothpicks at zipixtoothpicks.com today. 
Get 10% off your first order by using my code BONEYARD at checkout. Your lungs will be glad you did. You must be 21 or older to order. Warning, nicotine is an addictive chemical. Zip more, smoke less with Zipix nicotine toothpicks. Hey, Bulldog fans, we love dogs. And not just Bulldogs, we love our own dogs. But why are so many dogs suffering with health issues these days? Actress Katherine Heigl, who's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her own foundation, says she's seeing more issues with joints and odors and health than ever before. And after doing some research, there's one place we can all look to support our dog's health. It's their food. She decided to create something that she could actually feel good about and about feeding her dogs. It's called Superfood Complete. Superfood Complete is made with over 30 of the healthiest ingredients in the world including several superfoods vital to your dog's health. Badlands Ranch also supports the Jason Debus Heigl Foundation, which has helped rescue thousands of dogs and place them in loving homes. How cool is that? I have fed my dogs this. They absolutely love it. And I kind of use it as a food supplement with their regular food. They prefer this to their regular food. True story. Go to badlandsranch.com slash boneyard. And you can order right now and get up to 50% off your regular price order with a 90-day money-back guarantee. How about that? If you want your dog to experience all these incredible things, go to B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S ranch.com slash boneyard. This first segment will run a little bit over. Pick this up today. We got the word last night, and uh, he wanted to wait and announce today, so it kind of leaked out. And that's part of it. It's his moment, right? But I want to bring you through this thing with uh, Jacob Pruitt, the right-handed pitcher from Indiana State. Indiana State uh, got hosed last year. And uh, he and I talked about the whole hosting thing. You know, he's like, I told him, I said, you know, if we didn't host and you guys did, I'd have been okay with that. But not for both of us not to host and ECU. He goes, dude, it's the same way with us. We felt the same way. It was like, hey, I kind of get it. Mississippi State, big ballpark from the SEC, really good down the stretch. Had a really good week in Hoover. And so he said, yeah, we'd have been okay if we had to travel and Mississippi State got the host. He goes, but then, oh, no, neither one of us. It's funny. You know, everybody kind of keeps up. So Jacob Pruitt, who was a sophomore this year from Yorktown, Indiana, we've had some success with Indiana kids. So he opens up the year as the Friday night starter for Indiana State who I think everybody would agree was the top G5 program in the country this year. Opening day, he goes six innings, allows four hits, no runs, two walks, strikes out nine. Comes back the next weekend against Marshall. Goes five and two-thirds of an inning, allows four hits, two runs, only one of them earned. Walks one, strikes out 11. The next week, Southern Miss, the Golden Eagles, you know what a good program they are. We do, they're our neighbors, they're our little kissing cousins down to the south there. Jacob goes five and a third, allows three hits, one run. He did have some walks and had 11 strikeouts. And this is a game he started having some tightness, a little inflammation. Well, he misses, you know, more than a month, and they start kind of rounding him back into shape. He works two innings against Purdue, four strikeouts, a hit and a run. Short stint against Bradley. This goes a third of an inning, no hits, no runs, no errors, all good stuff. Um, Southern Illinois, kind of a tough outing for him. Uh, three hits, one run. Had a couple walks, no punchies. Comes back four days later, working on the bullpen at this point. You're just trying to get him right. Four strikeouts in an inning and two-thirds against Illinois. They got they got they did score three runs against him. And then there's Belmont, good outing against them. Evansville, you know, had uh, – Scattered some hits against them, but struck out five in a relief appearance. Came back against Valparaiso, also in their five strikeout deal. They hit him around a little bit. And then down the stretch, really good outing against Southern Illinois. Good outing against Illinois the second time. And then Kentucky, of course, in the regional there. Uh, Goes four and two-thirds, gives up six hits, three runs. But uh, this is a guy, when healthy, who is as good as anybody. We say we needed a weekend starter. We have one here. And, again, this is a guy, beginning of the year, he was outstanding. 31 strikeouts the first three games of the year. They won all three of those games. 
And the next thing you know, he has a little bit of arm trouble, works his way back. And so I know the stats don't jump out as just gaudy. He's 3-2 and two with a 3.02 ERA. Worked 41 and, and two-thirds of an inning. Also had a save. Uh, less than a hit per. Allowed 14 earned runs on the year. Had 57 strikeouts, 23 walks. Uh, he is a fastball guy with some arm side run, and he's got a slider. And then a, a changeup that he'll spot up on occasion to keep people honest. It's a good get. It absolutely is. And we talked about we needed to get pitchers, and we get, we're starting to get them. And uh, I think it's uh, one of those things you look at, too, and you begin to think, okay, it's all kind of coming together now. He's not Paul Skeens. But he could be Luke Holman. He's got that kind of potential. And that's important to understand. You know, Justin Parker gets his guy. Now, we're showing some other guys. We're going to talk about that some later in the show. But uh, two commitments. And so what you got left, one more bat, if you could find the right one, and then a couple more arms. Another starter and probably kind of long, a long relief piece that maybe could uh, be a spot starter for you if you needed it. And so there's some names out there. I'm going to share a few things about that. But the reality of it is is that uh, this thing is coming together. Now, you know, a week ago, I told you guys it would probably be this week before we got some more commitments, and now here they are. It's a dead period right now to be dead through Friday, and then we can start hosting visitors again. And it's different than football, right? When you have football and everybody comes in, it's, you know, it's, a, it's an all-weekend deal. A lot of times for, for, for baseball, it's basically a day, right? They come in, we go to dinner, uh, or they get here late, and then we have breakfast, you know, lunch and dinner, and then and that's the visit. You know, it's, it's kind of a day, day and a half type deal. There are some guys that will stay two nights, but it's pretty rare. But um, I share that with you because – we turn these visits around pretty quick, you know. And uh, guys have been on the road, Coach Lamonis, Coach Parker, go through all these guys have been back and forth to the Cape, checking on our guys, seeing how our guys are doing, just kind of checking in, but also doing some recruiting, you know. And uh, some of your current players doing some recruiting for you too. So, yeah, it's coming together. It's coming together. Everybody just needs to calm down, just relax. And we knew when we left Charlottesville, Virginia, we're going to have to hit the portal hard to find some offensive players. We knew that. And now you have. You start thinking, okay, we got six commitments and five of them on the offensive side, and you go get one more bat. I mean, goodness gracious, you know. Then you start thinking about Dave Marchand coming back, and hopefully that's the case. You know, Bryce Chances has got coming back. You know, Nolan Stevens has got coming back. Bryce Highfield healthy again. So you start thinking, you know, how many times last year did we not have the offensive depth? I mean, you remember the, remember the first week of the season? Maybe you've forgotten. Dave Marchand was out, pulled a hammy. Right, late in fall in uh, fall ball or pre preseason ball, the last scrimmage of the of the preseason, he pulls a hammy. wasn't as severe as it was the year before, but he's still an issue, so he didn't play for a bit. And Logan Kohler separates his shoulder the very first time, so you know then all of a sudden we got to put a true freshman, Dylan Cup, who we all know and love now. Right, you got to throw a true freshman out there to start on opening day, and then next thing you know, you got Nate Chester kind of holding down third base for a while. And uh, we had some offensive struggles for a while. And that's one thing we talked about on the show. you got to get Kohler healthy. you got to get Marshawn back. And Cup, of course, even when they got back, you know, you remember we had a stretch there where Amani DH'd and uh, Dylan played short and David played second. Yeah, that was a pretty good run for us for a while. Kind of start piecing some things together. And then right before Dylan gets injured, he really kind of finds the bat a little bit. You know, he, it took him a little while to acclimate, but, you know, he was getting hot, you know, late. And that was the thing all along. People said, you know what, you got to get in college and kind of get the hit tool going. But when you start thinking about what we have coming back, what we have coming in, you know, we're going to have some guys, right? I mean, we are well over the roster limit right now. So it's going to be a busy fall. It's going to be a very competitive fall. And that's what you want. I don't want anybody to come in here feeling comfortable. Ever. You know, competition – breeds good things everybody gets better when there is the opportunity and requirement to compete and that should always exist at a place like mississippi state baseball all right time for today's top 10 list is always brought to you by close with blair.com that's c-l-o-s-e with blair b-l-a-i-r.com blair chandler is a mortgage professional you may not know when you need one but chances are you're not going to navigate through life without multiple mortgages 
And the first time you buy a house, it can be a very intimidating process. You don't know what you're getting into until you get into it. And it's good to have somebody that can kind of hold your hand through that process that has seen it all and done it all. That's Blair Chandler. It's true. So when you're looking for a game day condo, again, that may be more affordable than you think. You're looking for your first home or perhaps life is throwing you a curveball and you're looking for a life reset. Maybe you're getting married. Maybe you're getting divorced. Maybe you've been transferred. Take something off your plate and turn your mortgage needs over to Blair Chandler. Give them a call or text today at 601-500-2344. Again, 601-500-2344. All right. Had a lot of people reach out and said, Steve, you should do a birthday list, like the top 10 songs of uh, your lifetime or songs about birthdays. It's Independence Day tomorrow. Maybe a song about independence. I kind of went with that theme. I didn't necessarily go with the America theme. We did that last year. But top 10 songs about freedom. How about that? You can probably pull some out right, like right now. You say, oh, I know this is going to be on the list. But uh, top 10 songs about freedom. And I, to be honest with you, I didn't have to Google anything to jar the memory. Not a ton of songs out there about freedom or things of that nature. However, some really good ones. Number 10, one of my favorite rock bands of all time. A lot of people tried to lump them in with the hair metal generation. That just wasn't correct. They're a rock and roll band that just happened to come to prominence during the hair band era. To be honest with you, I think the hair band moniker is a little bit disrespectful. Had some very talented musicians. There's a lot more to them than just hair, right? A lot of people see you know, Poison and Pretty Boy Floyd in those album covers and assume everybody's Revlon rockers. Not the case with these guys. We're talking about Tesla, who's still out there selling out venues regularly. We're going to go back a few years, though. We're going to go with a great track called Freedom Slaves. Freedom Slaves, because we're all slaves to freedom, right? We all have to work together to maintain our freedom. It's true. There are people fighting for peace. I know it's a misnomer, but that's the reality. And allow us the opportunity at this point on the eve of the day that we celebrate our independence to thank our men and women of the armed forces that we can go out tomorrow and have hot dogs and watermelon and shoot fireworks and things like that and celebrate being an American under the blanket of freedom and protection that they provide. Thank you. Number nine, this is actually one of my favorite songs on the Footloose soundtrack. And I love the movie Footloose. I can dance, too. You know, I've always been able to dance. It's true. It's true. You can say what you want. I did it professionally. It's true. Uh, but all that I understood, I like the movie Footloose. I have never seen the remake because it's kind of like, you know, there are just some things you don't mess with, and that's one of them. Ren McCormick is Kevin Bacon. I don't need a new version of that. There's nothing wrong with the original. It's perfect. It's perfect. And when I say the name Willard, you know exactly who I'm referring to. It's true. But there was a a second single from Kenny Loggins off that album. It's a really good track. It's called I'm Free from Kenny Loggins, Heaven Helps the Man. Great track. Big Kenny Loggins guy here, man. Love Kenny Loggins. I do. Number eight. The first appearance for this artist on our list today. You know, ordinarily we don't uh, duplicate. But I felt like, you know what? I'm going to get the solo joint and the, um, the group representation here for George Michael. It's Freedom 90. Freedom 90, right? You know it. And the video is phenomenal. In the words of Ben Howen, absolutely phenomenal. They're an NC2A team, Steve. It's true. George Michael, God rest his soul. Got to live a tortured life. If you haven't watched that documentary, let me encourage you to watch it. I love watching music documentaries because I like to know the stories behind the songs and to find out that George Michael wrote Careless Whisper when he's like 18 years of age. I immediately got a hold of my son, Ian, and said, son, you're just skating by. If that guy can write Careless Whisper as a teenager, then you can do something similar. Let's get it together. But Freedom 90, George Michael. Number seven, you got to work this in here, too. And it's such a good song, too. It's such a happy song. And it goes back, man, years. It was uh, written, I guess, I guess, around our bicentennial, maybe. It's Philadelphia Freedom from Elton John. 
And I love the, uh, the strings in the beginning of this. They kind of build and build and build and build. And I watched the Rocket Man movie too. I didn't like it nearly as much as Bohemian Rhapsody. It was good. It was entertaining. But I didn't like the... Um, I didn't like how we would just like break out in a song. Like we'd be in the middle of a dramatic scene and it all of a sudden kind of became a musical. Like I didn't like that aspect of it. I, I wish it had been more like Bohemian Rhapsody where it's like, yeah, there's some performance stuff, but we're, we're kind of telling a story here. I did not know that we were going to break into song right in the middle of a dramatic scene. Just That's just me. But uh, I did enjoy the film, but not as much. But uh, Elton John, what can you say, man? He's been a worldwide treasure for years. Number six, you talk about uh, an interesting juxtaposition here. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, too, I, I don't necessarily agree with everybody's politics on this list today. Uh, a guy that's, uh, that really doesn't care if you adopt his politics or not is our number six artist today. It's Kid Rock. It's Kid Rock, and we're going ball, what about? No, we're not going ball, what about? We're not. Uh, we're going with Born Free, and uh, that's become an anthemic song at his shows. I got a friend of mine, I think, has seen Kid Rock like 20 times. A lot of people, big Kid Rock fans. I, that for, I, I got the first couple albums, loved them. Loved them. It was very different. What he's doing today. And I like that song, First Kiss, too. Man, how great is that? I remember talking about that one during COVID. It's great. But uh, Born Free, number six on your list today. Number five, George Michael's second appearance. Might have actually been my favorite song off Make It Big. And I had that album. I never really fashioned myself as a prep. You know, but when you see, you know, George Michael and Andrew Ridgely, you start thinking, you know what, maybe I should dress a little bit nicer. The, girl, the girls like those guys with the luscious locks. It's true. But uh, it's freedom. I don't want your freedom. And I, I love the falsetto on this, too. I think George Michael's ultra, ultra talented. And I don't just mean, like, a lot of people, and let's just kind of say it for what it is. There were a lot of people that bought George Michael's music because he was a very attractive man. He was a sex symbol. I need to have one or two songs that people had to run out and buy it because that was their way of supporting them, right? It's true. But the guy was more than just a pretty face. The guy was incredibly talented, incredibly talented, an amazing songwriter. Probably doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Number four, and how we can segue from Wham! to Rage Against the Machine. This is the only place that could happen, guys. Right here on the Boneyard. We go from Wham! to Rage Against the Machine. And Zach De La Roca... And those guys absolutely, in many respects, kind of the voice of my generation. And, I, and I, I say that with as much respect as I can for everybody else. There's nobody like them. Even today, there's nobody like them. And Rage Against the Machine did it their way. And again, I don't always agree with their politics, but I, I can share with you in the beginning of this thing with Rage, it was just about our voice being heard. They spoke on behalf of us and said, so, you know what, we need to change in America. And I think they were part of that, to kind of open up some minds and usher in some change in America. You know, and nowadays, there's people like, well, I don't listen to that, Steve, because uh, I think that Tom Morello guy votes opposite me. And, that, and that's fine, too. You know, I just hope you vote, right? Uh, but Freedom from Rage Against the Machine, man, is a very powerful song. And you got to think there are a lot of people out there that are not living the lives that we are. You know, we're very privileged to live in this country. And some people take that privilege for granted. And you're welcome to leave at any time. You know, it's true. It's so funny. There are some people that are outraged that really aren't agents for change. They just want to be agents for hashtags and complaining. Just my personal observation. Number three, it's Queen. And any time that we can work Freddie Mercury and Queen into a show, it's a good thing. Huge Queen fan. You guys know the very first record I bought my own money, Queen, the game. Loved it. Learned a lesson about sales tax, too. Kind of turned me off about government right then and there. I've been saving my nickels and dimes and dollars and everything else. And finally got my birthday money in and went and bought that record. Had just enough money and I go to pay for it and I go, oh, it's going to be another 75 cents. Well, I didn't have another 75 cents because I didn't understand sales tax. I was eight years old. My stepfather had to give it to me and I had to, I had to earn that dollar back. I had to do something around the house and earn it back. I'm from the 1900s when a dollar meant something to kids. A quarter meant something to kids because we could go and play Pac-Man or Donkey Kong. You get that quarter, you feel like you got something. You get a, a, a pocket full of quarters. You and your friends could play all day. But you always had that one friend that couldn't play. Always wanted to play, but wasn't any good. All he would do is just eat up your quarters. It's true. 
But uh, it's I Want to Break Free from Queen. And uh, a very controversial video, but uh, the song in and of itself, uh, really very good. And, and then, you know, being free is everything. It really is. I, you're, you're free to be you, right? That's important to understand. A lot of people haven't really embraced that. You are free to be what and who you want to be. It's true. That's why I have dreads down in my waist. Because I'm free to do so. I remember years ago, before I even had dreads. I had long hair. I didn't have dreads yet. And um, Brian Haydad and I were recording over at the, uh, at the incubator at the old studio. And uh, I had one of my classic Roberts and Rants. It was all in the middle of all the Hugh Free stuff. And, and, and it was really just kind of the infancy of that. Like it, it was just really kind of getting it to go. And like some, some people made a comment, some, some Ole Miss people on Twitter, uh, about me having long hair. You know, I said, you know, I'll, I'll do what I want to do. If I want to get dreads, I'll wear dreads. And less than a year later, my hair began locking on its own, and uh, here we are. Here we are. Happy and free. Number two, man, you got to love it, man. It's uh, Every time I hear this song, it reminds me of Jerry Maguire. You, and I love that movie. I do. I, I, the whole, you know, you had me at hello is kind of, I know some of you guys are like, oh, it's so romantic. Huh? You know, okay. Um, I really dig the movie. I think it's uh, one of Tom Cruise's best roles. But uh, it's when he thought he had the deal, right? He's trying to find, uh, you know, scrolling through the radio dial. You, you don't do that today, you know. It's true. But he scrolling through there and uh, couldn't find a song to sing, and he finally lands on Free Fallin' from Tom Petty. And it sings at the top of his lung. It's a great track. I think in some respects, maybe for a newer generation, it's probably the signature song from Tom Petty. Great track, Free Fallin'. Number one, though, I'm from South Mississippi. And this is an anthem for us. It's true. That's right. It's Leonard Skinner's Free Bird. Free Bird, baby. Number one. Song about being free. But I, I, tell you, I think I've shared with you guys before. There's a little negative connotation to this thing. Because uh, the opening lyrics written by Alan Collins were actually taken from a letter that his wife wrote to him. They were in a, a little bit of a spat. And she wrote him a love letter. And, and the lines that open up the letter... He said, Alan, if I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? And then here we are. That's where we are. It's incredible. Maybe you didn't know that. Maybe I've shared it before. I probably have. It's a great track. Uh, I think it's one of the best guitar sections in the history of American, if not world music. You know, you get all the horses pulling, you know. Good Gary, Steve Gaines, Alan Collins, all playing those... Um, those solos. And I think it says a lot about Alan Collins, too. Even though he wrote the song, he didn't want anybody to feel left out. And so every guitarist got to solo during that section. Uh, it's an amazing track. It has endured the test of time. It is your number one track today as we celebrate our freedom. And again, thanks to all of the men and women out there that make that possible for us, to protect us so we can all be idiots and do things that really don't matter at times while they're out there risking their lives to give us the ability to do so. So, again, thank you. And uh, for all those that we've lost over the years, too, we thank you for your sacrifice. I know we just have Memorial Day, but we can never say thank you enough. If you have ideas for the top ten list, reach out and let us know. best way to do that is to find us on social media. I'm on all forms of social media, at Scout Steve R. And Roy is on Twitter and Spotify under Dogmatic67, D-A-W-G-M-A-T-I-C-6-7. Be sure to check us out and enjoy your freedom tomorrow and every day. All right, next segment of the show brought to you by Campus Book Mart, a Starkvillian institution. Man, I love Campus Book Mart. I have for a long, long time. I want to go in there. I want to buy everything. And sometimes I want to buy it as gifts. But I'll buy it and I think, well, you know, I should probably spread the love a little bit. But uh, I love going in there because they have so many neat things. And if you're looking for Mississippi State merch, whether it be clothing, apparel, jackets. I guess that all fits in one category, Steve. But uh, in addition to that, too, there's a lot of little knickknacks for around the house to kind of let people know where you stand. Whether it's a housewarming gift, graduation gift, wedding gift, birthday present, hint, hint. You can find something for the Bulldogs in your life at Campus Book Mart. And if you can't make it to town, let me encourage you to visit them on the World Wide Web at campusbookmart.net. And by being a loyal Boneyard listener, we'll give you a phrase that pays. That's BSR, which stands for Beautiful Steve Robertson. 
Gets you free shipping on all orders over 75 bucks. Any order less than 75 bucks, absolutely incomplete. And mom, here's the deal. Everybody wants new Mississippi State merchandise. Whether it's vacation clothes, back to school clothes, or just knockabout clothes, everybody wants to wear new Mississippi State gear. I, I shared with you guys on the last show, when I was a kid and I got a gift, right around this time of year, and it was Mississippi State stuff, it mattered. Matter of fact, I've got a birthday gift that my dad got me years ago. I've got a framed 3M sticky note signed by Ron Polk. It says, Steve, best wishes and good luck always, Ron Polk. And it's framed, and it's Mississippi State merch. And to this day, I still had that. I was just a teenager at the time, and, uh, you know, I'm not anymore. But uh, I, guess that was, I guess it's about 40 years ago now, and it still sits here. I'm looking at it right now. And so the, if you want to buy people things that they're going to appreciate and cherish and treasure, buy them Mississippi State items because that's who we are and what we represent. That's campusbookmart.net. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the portal because that's the thing. Everybody's like, you know what, hey, the only thing better than a new commitment is the next commitment, right? Now, late last week, Learned that we're expecting some decisions this week. We've gotten a couple that went our way. We've gotten uh, one that didn't. And uh, a lot of other people out there will tell you we've had a 1,000. You know, there's over 5,000 kids in a portal, and some people will try to convince you that, that all of them told Mississippi State no. Um, that's a tough way to live, man. It really is. God bless you. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, so how it stands today is, uh, you know, or initially we were talking about, hey, we're going to take – Five position players and uh, two to three arms. So we're thinking eight. Well, now we've, we've gotten into this thing, and there are a lot of kids and their representation that are saying, you know what, hey, I, Mississippi State seems like a good option for me. And to be honest with you, and this is something that I think that the casual fan doesn't understand, uh, we've told some kids no. We've had some kids we didn't recruit. We've had some, some kids that were recruited us. And either just didn't fit or we had a better player or we're on somebody else. And so, you know, Mississippi State is still a destination. Some people act like perhaps we got to go out here and beg everybody to play for us. That's just not true. And if you read the stories that are free, I make all those for free, and we have had the first public comments of every single portal commitment. Ever. There have been seven summer commitments, and we have had all seven interviews with all seven. Uh, they've also tweeted out a graphic from, that we have you know, created for them to announce their decisions. And so you can go read what they have to say. And they speak glowingly about Mississippi State. It's not like, well, you know, I was looking for somewhere to play and Lamontis called me and I just needed something. You know, it's not like that. And I share again, everybody that we have committed had multiple SEC offers in addition to the offer they had for Mississippi State. It's not like we just got an offer from Mississippi State and Missouri and we're calling them multiple offers. You know, and a lot of people might a lot of work and play word games with you. That's not the case. We got some good guys. I also put our story together yesterday uh, about the portal, about SEC commitments, and I'm going to update that. I'm going to try to do it every day. Some days I don't have the time, and commitments are going to be rolling in quicker than uh, the normal. But I, I just want to run through some of this really quick for you. I need to pin this thing to the top. If you're over, it's a free article, and uh, it's called the SEC Baseball Progress Report. We've gotten thousands of views on that thing so far. And I just wanted to make this information kind of readily available to you, make it easier for you to find it. Because a lot of people out there, they're going to tell you, we're getting crushed in the portal. And they're wrong. And it's not really a matter of opinion. Let's look at some of the facts. I'm not going to give you all the names here. But heading into today, or, or in the last night, so I, I have not updated today. Uh, Alabama's got six commitments, one from Dartmouth, one from Georgia Tech, one from LSU, Penn, Samford, and Miami. And Jason Torres from Miami kind of had an up-and-down year. So not bad, not bad. And, but a lot of people would say, hey, Steve, what is, what's with these G5 guys? Guys, give me the ascending G5 guy over the guy that doesn't, that's proven he can't play in our league. And there's some casual fans. What about all Power 5 guys? Do you think there's just, like a, just a superstar-studded portal out there? There's a reason guys are in the portal. Look at Arkansas. They, they had 10, you know, and it's BYU, Rhode Island, Lincoln Memorial, which is D2, Ohio State, and that pitcher was 6-7 and seven last year. Florida Gulf Coast, Milwaukee, 
Oregon State, a guy that didn't play, Georgia State, TCU, and then ECU. So not much there. I mean, you think Dave Van Horn doesn't know what's going on? Arguably the best coach in all of college baseball. And he's got ten commitments, and eight of them are G5 or less guys. I guess BYU is technically a power, power four school now. But, uh, but the bulk of this class is all coming up from G5, including a D2 guy. Auburn, as of yesterday, six commitments. ECU, LSU, California Baptist, Creighton, South Florida, and Sanford. You say, but Steve, they got a guy from LSU. Yeah, Sam Dutton, who went 0-2 with a 5.86 ERA. I mean, is that who you want? I mean, nothing against – Butch will do a good job, don't get me wrong. I, I trust Butch Thompson. But do you think there were a lot of people beating Sam Dutton's door down? I'm going to tell you, no. No. Florida. Six commitments. Clemson, Miami, Stetson, Jacksonville, Samford, Texas Tech. So four of their six from the power five or four. But probably the best guy they got is Michael Ross from Samford, who went 13-0 and last year. Uh, arguably one of the better pitchers in this portal. And we, we recruited him too. We brought him in for a visit. It didn't work out for us. But, um, you yeah, that's the neighborhood in which we live in, Georgia. They got out of the gate really strong. And a lot of people are like, hey, Lynn, look at all these portal commitments. Yeah, they had 11. So far, UT Arlington, UNC Asheville, Georgia State, VCU, Alabama, USC, Georgia State, Wofford, Georgia State, Eastern Kentucky, and Miami of Ohio. So two of their 11 from the Power Five. And let's dig a little deeper. Alton Davis, we pitched against, he pitched against us, Mississippi State. We've had some success against him. Four and two with a 5.61 ERA. And listen, I think Alton Davis is interesting. He throws the ball really hard from left side up to 97. It's often flat. doesn't have good sync to it. Thus, the 5.61 ERA. And maybe West can refine the delivery a little bit there. Eric Hammond from USC, you heard that name. Three and two with a 6.75 ERA. Guys, if we had guys with those kind of numbers committing to Mississippi State, they're going to be blood in the streets of Starkville. Kentucky, again, as of yesterday, 11, 11 commitments. Eastern Kentucky, Cal, Columbia, Richmond, Illinois State, South Dakota State, Kansas State, Radford, Canisius, Cal Bakersfield, and Longwood. So two of the 11 Power 5 guys, two of the 11. And so, well, well Steve, I heard Cal, yeah, he went 1-1 one one with a 4.45 ERA, and maybe he'll be good. Maybe you will. And Nick Mangione knows what he's doing. Kansas State, you heard that one too, right? Raphael Peltier, he hit 210 last year. Now, he hit nine tanks. He's got some pop, and maybe he'll do great there at Kentucky. But you start looking at this, and you say, man, Kentucky's at the top of the portal rankings. But then you dig a little bit deeper in the details, you begin to realize this is a group that is long on potential and short on productivity. LSU, I think LSU's done a good job in the portal. And a lot of other people would say the same, even without even looking at it. You would say, well, LSU's did great in the portal. Well, why? why? Because you saw it cross Kendall Rogers' Twitter feed. Did you look into it? They got eight commitments. Again, this is as of yesterday. Wofford, South Florida, Indiana State, Indiana State, Nichols, Mount St. Mary's, Auburn, and Dayton. <clears throat> That's it. So one Power 5 guy. Chris Stansfield from, from Auburn, who was a part-time starter, and he may even get drafted. He had 276, four tanks, and 25 RBI. Probably the best guy in their class is Luis Hernandez, first baseman from uh, Indiana State. He had 359, 23 jacks. Those are big numbers. Zach Cowan from Wofford, 10-2. And, and Wofford, of course, beat LSU uh, in, the, uh, in the regional, if memory serves me correct. I think LSU had to beat him twice. So, again, you know, again, not a lot of power five. One power five guy out of eight. And people, many people will tell you LSU doing as good a job as anybody in the portal, and you got one power five guy. Of course, Mississippi State now up to, uh, to six commitments. North Alabama to Citadel, Houston, Campbell, USC, Upstate, and Indiana State. So, we got, you know, Houston, at, uh, a team that's, uh, you know, had some good stuff. Uh, Oklahoma, as of yesterday, one guy, Logan Pruitt, a pitcher out of Sam Houston State. So one guy. Ole Miss. And again, this is as of yesterday. Three commitments. 
They got Luke Chang, shortstop from Illinois State, a kid from St. Joseph's, and a kid from BYU. Luke Chang, 373 hitter at limited action, no tanks, 11 ribbies. Will McCausland from St. Joe's, 4-4 four four to 4.780 ERA. And then Colin Ryder, probably the best – Ruder, probably the best guy they've got, 264 with 10 tanks. South Carolina picked up a commitment yesterday. I haven't updated this yet. They get Jordan Kerrigan from Florida State, and he was there last year. They couldn't get him eligible. So he carries over this year, didn't play last year. Then there's Austin Crowder from Miami. Jarvis Evans from Georgia, he pitched against Mississippi State in that Sunday game that we won. Uh, Wyatt Evans comes in from Tennessee, didn't play last year. Nathan Hall comes in from Clemson. He had 227, no home runs, and three RBI. Caleb Jones from Winthrop, decent pitcher from a mid-major, and then Charlie Maglio from Campbell. And so, again, South Carolina, you start looking at this, and you're like, are they going to be a better team? I mean, you know, at this, based on this level of production, you look at it and say, you know what, I don't know if they've really improved themselves. And maybe Jordan Carrion can be a dude. This guy's been around a little bit. Uh, as of yesterday, and it's so funny, too, if you ask people right now, the casual fans in the SEC, and say, who do you think is killing it in the portal? It's, you know, Tennessee. Tennessee got their first commitment out of the portal yesterday. Tanner Franklin from East Tennessee State. He had an ERA of 5.60. Won four games out of five. Four and one. He had a bunch of no decisions. Anyway, he may go up there, and, uh, and Frank may turn him around. And, and do a great job because, you know, Tony Vitello does a great job developing players. Uh, but, uh, I mean, they're, they're not killing it. Now, they will. I, I suspect they're going to get uh, Fisher from Ole Miss and uh, they'll get Dickinson from Utah Valley State more than likely. But, um, yeah, Tennessee will have a say. And they're a little bit later getting started. They've been a little busy. But uh, that was a big thing early on. It's like, well, hey, you know, Steve, hey, Kentucky and Georgia's got all these guys and they're still playing, you know. And then you see Tennessee with one. Yeah. I think Tony Vitello's system kind of speaks for itself. Texas, as of yesterday, three commitments. One from Arizona State, one from Penn, one from Louisiana Monroe. And a lot of people think Easton Winfield from ULM is going to be great. He had 332, 10 jacks, and 40 RBI. You know, we'll see. You make the jump to SEC pitching, it's a little different deal. We'll see. Uh, Thomas Burns comes in from Arizona State, 1-1 one one with a 4.75 ERA. We saw Eli Trop pitch uh, in the regional uh, for Penn. Texas A&M, of course, Texas and A&M both have been kind of busy here as of late. A&M has three commitments. Picked a big one yesterday. Uh, but they had one from Fairfield and one from Penn. And then they had Gavin Cash from Texas Tech, who maybe a guy that's drafted anyway. But, uh, yeah, that was big. It, it moves the needle. Vanderbilt. A team that we just beat out for Jacob Pruitt. Georgetown, Michigan State, USC Upstate, James Madison, Dayton, and Stanford. You so I hear a couple big names in there. Yeah, Joseph DeZerwa from Michigan State, 6 and 1, 407. That kid's really good. He is really good. And there's Tommy O'Rourke from Stanford, didn't play last year. And so I put all that together so you could see for yourself. Instead of you having to go look all this stuff up, I did it for you for free because I love you. But also, in many ways, kind of to defend our portal class here. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, everybody else around us is just lapping us and getting all the best players, and you, and you go look a little bit deeper, and you're like, oh, well, that's the point. That's part of the gig. That's part of the job is to educate and inform, right? And it's so interesting one of the things that I like to do, and now that I'm not writing a book, you know, that book's basically finished. I've got some final edits i got to approve. But um, we'll get that done this week, and then we'll be pushing the thing off next week. But, uh, you know, i got time now. You know, i got, I got time because I want our fans, especially those that come to Gene's page. Again, this is free. You don't even have to be a subscriber. And if you want to be a subscriber, you can get your first month for a dollar right now. That's a great deal. 30 days of coverage for a dollar. And, and you can be ahead of the game, right? And you'll find out first on a lot of things. And you'll get to read the first comments from your baseball portal guys and many of your football guys as well. And so, not to mention, we do a lot of great features too. You should be, come be a part of that. But, um, but just a buck, 30, your first month for a buck. But um, I get so tired of the, the generalization of stuff. 
it's like, oh, we're getting killed. And I'm like, so I, I keep up with this stuff regularly. And I ask people, it's like, well, can you explain to me what you're talking about? And they never can. Oh, well, Steve, don't deny it. You know we're getting killed. Well, I mean, I, I don't agree, but can you explain to me your point of view? Like I asked some people earlier this week, it's like, oh, we're, we're losing all the top players in the portal. Well, who are they? Well, you never get a list. And so we've had all these top pitchers that have turned us down. Well, who are they? Well, there's Zach Rude. Okay, I'll grant you that one. Who else, who else is there? Michael Ross, loved him. You know, he's in Florida now. A kid that decided to go to Florida over Mississippi State. You know why? Because it's two hours from his family. You say, but Steve, we got to make it happen. You know, what price is your family being able to come to your games? What, what, what value, what dollar amount do you place on that? And I'm not making excuses, but that's the reality. That's what happens. And that's the thing, too, when you think about our coaches, right? It's one thing to think about, like, Georgia. Do you know how many colleges there are in Georgia to play Division I baseball? Right? you got Georgia State, obviously, Georgia Southern. You know, you got so many other ones out there. And so you've got a ready-made farm system. And so a guy that goes to Georgia State – begins to kill it and he goes hey i'm gonna go in the portal maybe i get an opportunity at tech or uga and they go in give me colleges play baseball division one baseball in the state of florida and so all of a sudden i get out there and i'm at stetson or i'm at florida atlantic or florida gulf coast and i'm killing it i'm at jacksonville and i'm killing it i'm gonna go in the portal and maybe i get a chance to go to one of the big three maybe i go to miami maybe i go to florida florida state maybe even ucf it puts me in a great position i got going out here and proving myself that I belong to play major college baseball. Do you know what we have in Mississippi? Yeah, I'll, I'm pausing for emphasis sake. You got State, you got Southern Miss, and you got Ole Miss. Now, outside of Chris Lauterhouse, who helped us win a regional in 98, you hadn't seen many guys leave Ole Miss and go to Mississippi State. You hadn't seen many guys go from Mississippi State go to Ole Miss. And Southern Miss is a really good G5 program. And Oz and those guys do a great job. Do you see many Southern Miss kids going in the portal? Well, I think so. No, you don't. You don't. And more times than not, the ones that do are guys that are proven that, hey, maybe I need to be somewhere else. And if they can't play at Southern Miss, they certainly can't play at State or Ole Miss. Right? So we don't have this built-in farm system in the state of Mississippi that perhaps some other states do. I mean, you look over, like, even at Alabama and Auburn, right? I mean, you got UAB, you got Sanford, you got USA, and those guys play a pretty good brand of baseball most of the time. I remember Colton Ledbetter came here. You know, there's a whole part of that, right? So when kids go in the portal and they have been somewhere off, you know, like say for an example, a kid from Florida, uh, you know, signs with, I don't know, Tennessee or signs with Kentucky. And then they go in the portal. A lot of times there is a lot of pull to come home. So for guys like Kyle Jones, who played at Stetson, it's like, hey, I'm going to go to Florida and I'm going to be like an hour and a half away from my family. And my dad can come to all my games. My mom and all my friends back home can come support me. When, and listen, when I, want, I need to go home just to kind of put my feet under mom's table. It's a lot easier to do so. Now, granted, he's coming up from Stetson, right? But you get my point. Same thing for Michael Ross. I've been over here in Birmingham, right? And it's tough. You know, everybody can't get here for the midweeks. But you know what? If I, if I go to Florida, because I'm from Lakeland, Florida, you know, maybe I got some buddies come down on a Tuesday night and after come watch you play a ball game and then we can go eat together and just kind of hang out and I can go introduce you to some of my friends. That's difficult to overcome. And so we don't have that built-in infrastructure because, again, because Southern Miss is a good place to go play baseball, you don't have those kids go kill it at Southern Miss and then go jump in the portal and then all of a sudden State or Ole Miss has a, a natural connection 
with them because more times than not, they're Mississippi kids or guys that come from the South. So you don't have kids from Mississippi that, number one, because State and Ole Miss have been so good, and Southern Miss, you don't have a ton of Mississippi guys that are leaving their programs. They may leave the state, and I'm pulling up the database right now. Pulling up the database right now, just, just, just because, okay? So Southern Miss right now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys go in the portal. Seven. And uh, we got connections with a couple of those kids, you know, guys that have already been here, you know. That, that's another aspect of this too, you know. And uh, we wish those guys the best. We do. But, you know, you start looking here like Drew Druckenmiller, pitcher, transferred to Sanford. Nolan Tucker, second baseman, transferred to Xavier. You get my point here? You're just not having a lot of those guys. Of course, Gray Bain, of course, uh, you know, got some connections to Mississippi State, obviously, you know. Uh, he was here, ended up um, leaving, landed at Southern Miss, wished Gray the best, met his dad several times. Great people, you know. But my point being is that Southern Miss is not a feeder school to State and Ole Miss, like some other schools are, and around other states. So we have to work a lot harder because we're recruiting out-of-state players. And say, Steve, with the resources we've committed to baseball, we absolutely have to get it done. And you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. But we're not going to have that kid that may be out of high school, you know, signed with South Carolina, and he's going to call his uh, travel team coach and say, Coach, uh, can you reach out to Mississippi State and see if they have interest with me if I go in the portal? because those kids just don't exist. And so we're having to grind. We are. And we're doing a good job. That's important to understand, too. And uh, I'm not going to get up here on the soapbox anymore on the show. Uh, but I'll tell you that um, your staff is answering the bell. We're not going to get everybody we offer. We're not going to get everybody that comes in for a visit. And you know what? Neither is LSU, neither is Tennessee, neither is Kentucky, neither is Arkansas. We beat them on kids, too. But people forget that. Like it's just like it's just like as in life, right? People always remember your failures, right? Because everybody, I think Dave Chappelle said it best. You know, the coward can't wait for the hero to stumble, right? And the big thing behind that is because it makes us feel better about ourselves. It's like, oh, this guy's up here on this pedestal and doing all these great things, and then all of a sudden they do something that um, diminishes their stature in our eyes, and we're like, well, okay, it lets us off the hook. You know, I think it should be the other way around. I think when we see that guy or that lady up there really accomplishing something, it should motivate us to try to catch them, not to pull them down with us. Just my take. But uh, I wanted to get that point across today because that's something that I have observed, you know, in the last couple of years that, uh, you know, we just – Southern Miss is just not a feeder school for us. And, you know, uh, you know, we go over in Alabama and get some kids. We have done it historically. You know, but um, – you know, it's, sometimes it's cheaper. Like well, The thing about it is like the, the prep high school kid from Alabama, in most cases it's been cheaper to play ball at State or Ole Miss than it has been Alabama or Auburn. Now, NIL has changed some of that. But that, that, why do you think we've had some success down there around Auburn? You know, why do you think we get Rowdy Jordan? I remember talking to Kevin Jordan, who I absolutely love. I love that whole family. You know, Kevin, of course, played intercollegiate athletics at Auburn. And I asked him, I said, did you get a lot of grief about that, about Rowdy? He goes, no. Nah. He goes, it's Mississippi State, man. It's Mississippi State. He goes, it'd be like some kid in Mississippi choosing to go play football at Alabama or Auburn. And people are like, well, I get it. You know, it's Alabama or Auburn. In baseball, we get the benefit of that doubt that a kid that could grow up a stone's throw from the Auburn Plainsman Park would choose our school over theirs because we're Mississippi State. And listen, I, I love it when we can throw our weight around a little bit. You know, when some kid picks us over their in-state schools, because you know what, I feel like I can have a better career there because of the facilities, the coaching staff, the tradition, the fan base, the stadium, the experience. It's just better at Mississippi State. And the thing that I always hear, you know, from our baseball coaches, if we could just ever get them here, you know, if we, once we get a kid to campus, 
we're in the game. No matter who else is recruiting them, we're in the game. And you want to be able to close out on everybody, but it's just not going to be the case because at times kids are going to want to go home. Think about your own child, right? You know, I've, I've got one with, uh, you know, with, it's married with two of my two grandgirls up there at six and a half hours away from home in northwest Arkansas. You don't think we'd love to have them closer? Of course we would. Of course, because it makes going to grandparents' day that much easier. It makes going to watch them play soccer and go to dance recitals that much easier. You can be more involved in their lives. And so sometimes we basically maybe suggest that there are some standards that apply to us that don't apply to these baseball families, and that's just not correct. If your son or daughter was playing intercollegiate athletics, you would want to see them play as often as you possibly could. And I I tell people all the time when I coached for years, I would tell my parents. We had that big parent meeting at the beginning of the year, and it didn't matter if it was, you know, if it didn't matter if it was t-ball or high school baseball. I was like, you know, it's really important for you to be here. And all the parents said, okay, I'm very supportive. I understand. And I said, listen, I, I appreciate that aspect of it. But it's not so much that you see them, which you should because you're going to watch memories that are going to sustain you the rest of your life. But it's more important that they see you, that you're there to cheer for them and support them because what happens when something bad happens, we're going to look to mom and dad to see how to act. When something negative happens, I need you to reinforce what we're doing here. Encourage them, get up, keep playing. Don't come to the stands. Focus on what you're doing. And so I just I thought about that yesterday was I'm putting together this portal article is that you just don't see kids from Southern Miss leave that often. And you don't see a lot of Mississippi kids sign with out-of-state schools and then ultimately get back in the portal. You have some guys sometimes that may sign with an out-of-state school and they return home, go to junior college, and then all of a sudden they become a prospect again. But it's important to understand we're probably having to work a little bit harder we in state schools, state no miss, uh, for those reasons. You know, you heard me mention you know, Tennessee got their first commitment in the portal. Where's he from? East Tennessee State, a kid that grew up just outside of Knoxville. It's a dream come true for him. And he would go there probably even if Tennessee wasn't <laughs> winning national championships. He's going home. And so I, I think that's an important aspect of this to kind of consider that we just don't have those guys. We just don't. And, uh, you know, one of the things I look for when I do my midweek preview, there's a lot of guys that go from the junior college system and they'll get over at – they'll get to North Alabama or they'll get to USA. And I always make a point to point them out, they're Mississippi kids. And I begin to think about what what an honor and a joy it must be for them to have a chance to go play at Duty Noble Field, even as a visitor, right? But we're just not having those guys mature – at those smaller schools and become a viable option for us as portal transfers. All right, final segment of the show brought to you by the Stark Vegas Clubhouse. If you're looking to come to Starkville and you're bringing a big group, or maybe you haven't even considered it, and now just listen to me, okay? We talk about making memories all the time. You want to do something great. You, we always talk about it, right? We need to get together more. Well, you know what? How about you just kind of take the bull by the horns, sir or madam, and get your group together more. So you know what? Hey, we're going to go book this. I'm going to get everybody together. Here's the dates. And uh, we're going to get everybody together. We're going to bring the kids together. We'll order pizza or we'll cook or whatever. And, and uh, we'll have a good time. Uh, maybe it's a cousin's deal. You know, we wouldn't get everybody to get let the cousins play. We don't get together enough. None of us do. No matter what you say or do, it's the reality of it. And maybe this summer, rather than take the big beach trip, and you know, maybe you can't afford to go to Disney or to take that big exotic trip to, uh, to load up your Instagram with pictures. Maybe you're not an influencer, you know, and you can draw whatever conclusions you want from that. Maybe you're just down home folks that just love your people, whether it be your friends or your family. Look into maybe even stay at midweek. You know, stay a weekend this summer or maybe just say, hey, you know, listen, let's all get together like on a Tuesday. You know, we'll go, hey, Jan and them are leaving for the beach on Friday. So let's all just take the week, and uh, we'll meet up, and we'll stay Tuesday through Thursday, and we'll enjoy Starkville when it's not a ball game weekend, when things aren't quite as hectic, right? It's a good way to look at it. Now, which one of you is going to be the person that says, you know what, 
I want to do that. I want to have a girls weekend or a guys weekend or a midweek trip or a mom's getaway and you just don't know where to go. Well, go to the Stark Vegas Clubhouse. Now, when you Google the Stark Vegas Clubhouse, you're going to have their Facebook page auto-populate, and you can look at the pictures and see all the amenities that are available to you, five bedrooms, two baths, tremendous back porch area, and nice place to sit out there and drink a glass of wine and just talk about everything going on in your life and watch the sunset. And you can go out there and fire up the grill, right? Have the old fire pit going out there. Conversations around a fire are just more meaningful, right? You know it's true. Now, while you're Googling, you're going to see some booking options come up. You can book through Airbnb or VRBO. Perhaps you have a credit. Maybe you just like to use them. That's fine with me. But if you want to save some money, I can do that for you. Book through the Evolve website and use promo code BSR10. BSR10, the number 10, gets you 10% off your stay. So beautiful Steve Robertson, 10, and you get 10% off your stay. How cool is that? Just by listening to this show, you're saving money. Be sure and check them out today, the Stark Vegas Clubhouse. All right, we did a uh, football recruiting update here, too. We did have uh, something that didn't go our way. I was able to kind of unearth this today. And uh, Cortez Thomas, a guy that I have been expecting to commit to Mississippi State uh, throughout this process, reached out to him, uh, getting ready to write. You know, he was supposed to announce today or tomorrow, reached out to him and said, hey, uh, I know it's announcement time. Can we get a story together? And he told me, he goes, hey, I'm going to commit to Ole Miss. I'm like, cool, let me put you in contact with David Johnson. Do you know David Johnson? Yes, I do. I said, okay, great. Best of luck to you and enjoy your fourth and your family. Called Dave Johnson. I was like, well, I called him first. He didn't answer. I texted Dave. I got news for you. Dave calls me right back. I connect Dave and uh, Cortez. I said, I asked him, I think, is Cortez a tag for you guys? He goes, well, yeah, I think so. And so he's committed to Ole Miss, and that was something we weren't expecting. And there were some people that were saying that he committed on his visit. I knew better, and I tried to share that. But, uh, yeah, the about face surprises me. I mean, it really does. And I said that on the message boards. I said if he didn't pick State, it would be a surprise. And everything was kind of trending in that direction. And my source on Cortez Thomas was Cortez Thomas, okay? Uh, And so, yeah, and I respect the fact that he told me himself, hey, I'm going to commit to Ole Miss. And then I was able to get that information to David Johnson. And so I I believe Dave was able to break the story. Uh, So at the end of the day, contrary to what some of you may believe, you know, um, I'm I'm a team player in that respect. And so if you're not coming here, you know, we want to make sure that somebody within our network breaks the news. But uh, I did go on the jeanspage.com message boards. And so if you're a jeanspage subscriber, you got a heads up that it wasn't going to be Mississippi State. I didn't want to steal the kid's moment. He still had the top three to choose from, you know, Texas A&M, Ole Miss, uh, Mississippi State. Uh, but I wasn't going to let our people get blindsided. I wanted to make sure that it was handled the appropriate way, and it was. Now people say, Steve, is it over? Do you think he'll flip? You know, possibly. You know, I mean, I, I know this. I know that it's a long process, and I know that Mississippi State has prioritized him, and uh, maybe some of us as fans kind of took him for granted because of the fact we're like, hey, well, his teammates are here. Surely he'll be here too. It uh, didn't work out that way. But it's a long process, so we'll see. But uh, his game hasn't changed. I love his game. I love his versatility. He's a guy that can play corner or uh, safety. And so we wish him the best. And, um, again, happy that we can make that a 247 moment for him. Uh, now, Kyle Johnson, the corner out of Bunky, Louisiana, uh, has informed us that he originally planned to announce on July 4th. And now he's not sure he wants to do that. Now, that that's – Thinks he needs a little more time to figure it out. Some people say, Steve, how do you read it? I don't. I don't. You know, uh, here's my take on it. You know, he, he, I think he was leaning to Houston and then visited Mississippi State, had a great time, and the next thing you know, everybody else starts committing. And, again, some people were kind of forecasting, and, I, and this is not – I'm not talking about media, but a lot of our fans were like, oh, I heard Kyle Johnson committed on his visit. He did not. And um, – Then he had to take his official visit to Houston. But I think some of us thought, you know, maybe after that visit to Houston that he'll be ready to go. Um, But I think it it just really kind of confused him. And he's just simply not ready to make the call. And so those were potentially three announcements, you know, in the next week to ten days that we were anticipating. One didn't go our way. (laughs) Ironically, the one we felt the best about didn't go our way. And now Kyle Johnson appears to be ready to kind of put things off for a little bit and I really like him. It's down between State and Houston. But, um, I, you know, you would say, but, Steve, should that be a question? Well, I, I think it would be. I mean, obviously we're a little bit biased because we think Mississippi State's the greatest. 
you know, but you're a kid from Bunky, Louisiana. Maybe you hadn't had a chance to get out and go do much. Kind of like the whole Ace Reese thing. Well, this is all I've ever done. I'd like to have a new experience. Maybe I'll go to Houston, you know. And so, yeah, that's a real thing. You know, it is. And so that's kind of where we are with that. And then you got Jalen Morgan that is going to announce on Monday, 2 o'clock, on an Instagram Live thing. Uh, all the latest chatter is about Georgia. So we could go into this thing as great as things have gone. We could go into this little DB trio thing and not get anybody right now. And so that's I'm giving you that information so you're prepared for that. Uh, now we'll update on Monday if, if we get some chatter over the weekend that suggests that Jalen Morgan's going to pick Mississippi State. Um, we'll update you on that. And that would be a very significant get. I mean, to beat Georgia head-to-head for a kid like that would be big. I'm just not expecting it. Uh, but here's the thing. A lot of people have talked about the Cortez Thomas thing. Guys, here's the thing. There is always theater when it comes to Mississippi recruiting. I'm not going to sit here and allege malfeasance of anybody, okay? Sometimes a prospect likes the other guys more. Doesn't mean that anybody did anything stupid. Sometimes there's just Mississippi State kids out there. I think Cortez Thomas probably is a Mississippi State kid. Uh, but I think Ole Miss, because Ole Miss has been beaten up on the recruiting trail as of late. Everybody sees it. And if you don't think that coaches are aware of the public relations angle, you're kidding yourself. And so this is an old play out of the old Ole Miss playbook from years ago, right? When everything's are going poorly, well, let's go out there and beat up, beat Mississippi State on a kid. Do what we got to do and get it done. And so I just tip my cap, you know. Uh, I, I'm not surprised in that respect. And I tell people all the time, like when I go on the radio or I'm on TV, whatever, I tell people, when it comes to in-state recruiting, any time that Mississippi State delivers a couple of punches, Ole Miss is going to counterpunch and vice versa. And, and honestly, they kind of play the PR game a little bit better than we do when it comes to recruiting. But all the month of June, all everybody heard about was Mississippi State, Mississippi State, Mississippi State, this commitment, that commitment. Things are going great. They go from three commitments to 17 commitments. Things are going great. They're in the top 25 again. And then Ole Miss, oh, they lose a four-star here, a four-star there. There's a three-star here. You know, then, then all of a sudden, the key one there decommits. you got to do something to stop the bleeding, and they have. That's how the game is played. And so some people get angry about it, and we're all thinking, hey, I'd like to have those four stars on our commitment list. And we may ultimately, in the end, I don't know what the young man's going to do when it's all said and done. I knew what he was going to do today and was able to communicate that to uh, – you know, our old Miss side to make sure that they got the opportunity to break that news. And so we will continue to work our sources and work the angles. But, you know, my source on this was Cortez Thomas. And I, I love the kid's game. I think he's a great young man. And uh, I do wish him the best. And if he goes to Ole Miss, I hope he loses every egg ball. You know, but, um, you know, his ability hadn't changed. But you got to always understand there is always some grand theater with all of this stuff, always. And so, like, Ole Miss people were all down on recruiting. Yeah, and I've shared many times, Ole Miss fans love football recruiting and football in that order. And so the thing they love the most seemed to be kind of running off the rails. So I got to do something. I got to answer back here, you know. So let me go beat Jeff Levy. And even some of the people in the Ole Miss media are saying this is a huge surprise and a huge upset, you know. And uh, you, know, you don't get mad about it. You just keep working. You know, that's what you have to do. Now, Tyler Lockhart, you know, he's a guy that recently decommitted from from Auburn, and I think everybody around expects him to commit to Mississippi State. And uh, that's another thing you begin to think about, too. Uh, momentum is big in ball games and in recruiting. So all of a sudden you start having all these Mississippi guys. Let's say, for an example, of course, let's say you get Cortez Thomas. Oh, well, then a couple weeks later you get Tyler Lockhart. Oh, a couple weeks later, then you get Kevin Otis. And so you close your summer out, landing three or four four-stars, and they're all Mississippi kids. And so then Jeff Labby's job is like, hey, all the best kids in Mississippi want to come here. Look, no, nobody's going to Ole Miss. And so that's always a part of it. And I don't say that to be critical of anybody. I mean, I've, I've, I've been doing this a long time. And so I, I see it. You know, and what's so interesting, too, I had somebody, one of my snitches, uh, when all the old Miss stuff happened, and they said, you know, it, it, it was in the Hugh Freeze's recruiting manual that one of their goals every year was to flip a Mississippi State commitment at or around signing day. It was one of their goals. And they tell you, oh, well, you guys are little brother. You know, we never think about you. But it's in their documentation. I don't know if it is today, but it was. It was one of their goals every single year. And so 
I understand every time that Mississippi State gets some momentum, Ole Miss is going to answer, and vice versa. Ole Miss will begin to get some things going, and Jeff Lebby understands how they operate. Yeah, Jeff Lebby understands the PR shell game. He understands what they do. Now, we're not ever going to – I don't think Jeff will ever just take a commitment from a kid just to get the headlines. I mean, Cortez Thomas is clearly a guy that can play in a Southeastern Conference. So, it's not like we just went and dug up a kid and said, hey, we need a commitment to get everybody to calm down. But, uh, you know, hey, again, I know how the game is played. Lane Kiffin got over today on Mississippi State. And uh, that's the way things work. And now it's Jeff Lebby's turn to counter, right? And uh, I think in the end, Jeff Lebby and Lane Kiffin are probably going to have some pretty wild battles before signing day these next few years because I think Jeff Lebby is not a guy that's going to go out there and talk trash back to, uh, to Kiffin on Twitter. But I do think he'll try to get him and uh, on the recruiting trail, especially late, because that's kind of been, again, kind of the ace up their sleeve, right? But to be able to take somebody late, and I'm here for it. I'm looking forward to it. But uh, I wanted to address that and kind of give you my thoughts on it since, I, you know, we were, we were the ones that kind of found out what was happening. And even though we didn't technically break the story, our network did, and we were a part of that. And um, so, again, happy for Dave Johnson. And uh, hopefully he was the one to break the story. I know he had it first. But, uh, uh, but nevertheless, it's where we are. If you had not done so, go to dutynoblebook.com, and you can pre-order the uh, biography of Duty Noble. Be out late August, early September. And uh, everything goes to layout next week. So I'll spend a few things, a few days this weekend kind of finishing things up and goes to layout. The next thing you know, it goes off the print. They'll send that electronic file over there. And we'll, we're already in line. We just got to deliver a file and then they'll start printing your books. And all books ordered to the website are signed. And uh, that's always a great incentive, right? A lot of people like to have their signed copy, which used to be really weird to me. But... Um, you know, please order, and all of my sports titles are there as well, and the new book, When the Bottom Falls. As soon as I get done with one, it's like I start on the next one, right? I take a year off, and the next thing you know, I'm right back. Uh, and uh, the lovely bride still running the uh, the float spot on, uh, on 12, and things are going great. I guess we've been open now, what is it, almost five months now? And uh, new people coming every day, got a lot of members. And, again, I told you guys, during the summer, this is a good time. Like, if you wanted to try it, now is a good time to get in because you know, we, use, we have availability every day during the summertime. Uh, it's brisk. Some days are busy. But uh, when the kids are here and the students are here and all the faculty's here, there are some days it gets booked up pretty quickly. And so if you wanted to try it, you're from out of town or you're coming to Starkville, maybe you're going to go swing through town, eat at Bulldog Burger Company, uh, go through Campus Bookmark, pick up some gear, and spend a night at Star Vegas Clubhouse while you get ready to text Blair Chandler. Uh, you can go float. And uh, dial 662-268-7601. Again, 662-268-7601. Speak directly to her, and she can answer your questions. And uh, visit us at True Rest of Starkville on Instagram and Facebook. If you need more information, go to truerest.com. I'm going to get out of here. You guys enjoy your fourth. I love each and every one of you. And uh, we'll be back on Friday. Be safe. Don't drink and drive. Don't operate heavy machinery or fireworks if you've been drinking. Uh, leave that to somebody else. But uh, let's celebrate our nation's independence, and we'll see you guys on Friday. Take care. You didn't think I was going to forget, do you? Until next time, let's all live our lives in a way we make more friends than enemies, and people can see a difference in the way we live.